Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast where we practice facts over feelings because we don't care about your feelings. We speak on facts. As you can see with the bottom of this, uh, on the scroller says, it says, the LeBron James, Bronny James spectacle must end for the good of the W, let's say the WNBA, the NBA. We finally have gotten the circus in town. The circus is here. Opening night was last night for the Los Angeles Lakers as they beat the Minnesota Timberwolves 110 to 103. And LeBron got his wish. He got his dream. He lived his dream. He got to play with his son for a grand total of two minutes and 41 seconds. Before we jump in, thank you for your continued support of our channel. We greatly appreciate you. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. If you haven't followed, subscribed yet to our channel and you're watching, please subscribe right now. Why not? You're here, right? And for those of you who don't know yet, I have a second channel, Rudy's Rant, on YouTube, where you can check out my different rants on different topics that are separate from this page. Um, so go check it out as, as well. And of course, be sure to become a member of our family here as we'll be dropping some some uh, videos and doing membership lives in the near future. So jump on board there. We thank you so much. Let's talk about this game right now. The Los Angeles Lakers beat the Minnesota Timberwolves, as I mentioned, 110-103. And Bronny James made the team despite being the worst player in the NBA preseason. Not the worst player in the NBA. He's that too. But the worst player in the NBA in the preseason. He stunk in the preseason. He was terrible. He looked like a deer in headlights. He looked like a chicken with his head cut off. All those things. And then, of course, he has that final game where the Lakers don't play anybody but the rookies and the people that are not going to make the team, for the most part. And they get beat by 60. What was the final score of that game? What was the final score? 132 to 74, 32 and 26, 58 points. They lost by 58 points. Bronny had 17, though, so of course there's a celebration because he had 17 points. Because he finally took a lot of shots. He took 17 shots, so 17 points on 17 shots. Well, that's massive efficiency, as you know. But of course, once again, he couldn't make any jumpers. He was one of five from three. So the largest the, the main thing of what people have been saying forever he's a three and d guy he can shoot the ball the man cannot shoot all respect he can't shoot but you can praise this wonderful game where he's had a minus 37 in the 35 minutes that he played he did lose by 58 so i guess there were another minus 21 in the other 13 minutes he didn't play but, of course, Bronny makes the team because he got paid an $8 million four-year contract, which is the most money a 55th pick has ever seen in the NBA draft. Let's talk about this all, though. We are here now where the season has started and the games matter, and the players that he's playing against are even better than the players he was playing against when he was looking like utter trash all preseason. Now they're the real guys who are playing full minutes, not playing 15 or 20. They're playing 30, 35 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes a game. And in the opener against the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Lakers had the option. They had the option. And they took the option. They got it out of the way. They played Bronny James. They made it, they did it in a way that was so unbelievably contrived and stupid. Because they wanted to do it the way LeBron wanted them to do it, which is he wanted to come into the game with his son. Beautiful. Beautiful sentiment. This is professional sports. This isn't rec ball. This isn't a father-son moment. This is professional sports. Ronnie James entered the game with the Lakers up 16 points with four minutes to go in the second quarter. At the very least, thank goodness, he did not come in the game before Jackson Hayes, Gabe Vincent, Max Christie, or Dalton Connect, who were the other four bench players who played in this game. Bronny was the fifth. 
They did not play Cam Reddish. They did not play Jalen Hood Shafino. They did not play Maxwell Lewis, who were all listed as on the roster. I guess they have 13-man rosters now. I'm not sure. This is the NBA. Who the hell knows? Maybe they changed the rules because they're all listed as DMP coach's decision. Last I checked, Cam Reddish is better than Bronny James. I mean, let's be real. Last I checked, Cam Reddish, who I don't think is very good, is better than Bronny James. Last I checked, Jalen Hood Shafino is better than Bronny James. I mean, he didn't play a whole lot last season, as he probably should have stayed in school, similar to Bronny James, but he was a first round pick, number 17 pick in the draft. He's also 6'5, 215. And in his freshman year at Indiana, he was damn good. Although he should have stayed in school, in my opinion, I thought that was a mistake. And he's paying for that mistake now because he's not playing. People think that these guys turning pro early, hey, you get some money, congratulations, you got money. Let's see how long your career lasts when you can't get on the court. And you're stuck at the end of the bench. Now, I have absolutely no idea who Maxwell Lewis is. He's 22 years old, six foot seven, 195 out of Pepperdine. He was the second pick in the draft by the Denver Nuggets last year. Um... He even played. I mean, how much he played? Thirty-four games last year. Oh, he played for the Lakers last year. I guess he got traded to the Lakers. Again, I have no idea who he is. But those guys didn't play. Bronny James did, and Bronny James was put in a game with with a sixteen-point lead and four minutes to go in the second quarter. And he enters the game with his father. I guess a beautiful sentiment. It's cute. LeBron got his dream. Can we move on? Can we move on? Bronny played two minutes and 41 seconds. In the two minutes and 41 seconds, he took a 28-foot three-pointer, missed, obviously, and had a shot blocked by Rudy Gobert. And there was a play that circulated in the internet now where he caught a pass from his dad, and he passed it right back to him, literally two seconds later, because the ball was like a hot potato to him, because, quite frankly, he is a deer in headlights. He doesn't know what to do. He is not ready. And all they have done is make a mockery of this league. They can sit here and say it's the most beautiful sentiment on earth. They can talk about nepotism and we should all be so lucky to have the power to do that for our son. Blah, 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 blah. It's embarrassing. He's not good enough. And when you sit here and you're playing for two minutes and 41 seconds with four minutes to go in the first half, and you pull him with 119 to go in the first half, you're talking what? Three possessions at most? 119 in the first half, he got pulled. Let's take a look real quick. At 119, he gets pulled. Anthony Davis misses a shot. Minnesota rebound, Julius Randle misses a shot, Re Anthony Davis rebound. These They're not even using shot clock. They go 11 seconds. I mean, that, people don't even let the shot clock run a little bit. Uh, Max Christie gets fouled. Anthony Edwards misses a shot. D'Lo misses a shot. Nikhil Alexander-Walker misses a shot. <laughs> a lot of missed shots. In a normal situation, there should be maybe three, four total possessions. If you're rushing the ball up and down the floor and jacking up bad shots, I mean, you're, you're going to have more possessions. All that said, when he came in, the score was 51-35. When he left, it was 53-42. In his two minutes and 41 seconds, the team was a minus five because they're playing four on five. They're playing four on five when he was on the floor. Max Christie came in for Dalton Connect at 119, and D'Angelo Russell came in for Bronny James at 119. But Connect started the third, second quarter. He started the quarter. He start, played 10 minutes of that quarter. 11 minutes of that quarter. Bronny played 2 minutes and 41 seconds. So he was on the court with LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Dalton Connect, and uh, Austin Reeves. So he's on the floor with Austin Reeves, Dalton Connect, 
LeBron and AD. So he wasn't out there with some scrub union. He was out there with the two of, two of the best players in the world. Yeah, LeBron and AD are, I mean, yeah, I know I say I don't think they're top 10 guys, uh, uh, but they're still two of the best players in the world. A great shooter in Dalton Connect and a, and a good pro in Austin Reeves. And they were minus five because he is like playing four on five. You got it out of the way. I hope we don't have to watch this again. I really hope. But makes it what but what makes it worse is even how TNT treats it. Because this was on TNT last night. At the end of the game, of course, they interview LeBron. But they in, interview Bronny James as well. Look, I don't have a personal issue with this this kid. I don't care about him on, on a level of I, I, I love I love sports. I love basketball. I love the competition of basketball. I love what it represents. Elite. The best players in the world play professional sports. We have cheapened it. The Lakers cheapened it. LeBron James cheapened it. Because he damn well knows that his son does not belong in the NBA right now. He's taking a spot from someone who deserve, who's earned it. He's playing ahead of Cam Reddish, who is a far better player than him. Ronnie doesn't play point guard. Not with LeBron on the court. He doesn't play point guard with anybody on the court. He's not a point guard. So this is where I go back to the stuff. I'm, and his defense is blah, whatever. It's nothing. It's too small. And he doesn't know what he's doing right now. And I, it is what it is. I, I get he knows how to play basketball, but he, does, he doesn't know how to play professional basketball because he barely knew how to play college basketball. There's a graduation process. That's why you go from 12th grade to freshman in college, freshman to sophomore, sophomore to junior, junior to senior. And you typically get better at each step. He wasn't given that chance. He chose it. I don't know. I don't know what I believe about the situation with this family. If it really was Bronny's call to turn pro. I don't know. He's been listening to his dad tell the world he's better than half these dudes on league pass while he was still in high school. His dad then said last year that he was better than players on his team last year. And he averaged four and a half points a game at USC, shooting 27% from three. So what are we talking about? His father created expectations that he cannot come close to. Not right now. And they're not going to ship him to the G League. They're not. They're, mark it down. If I'm wrong, I will come back on here and say, yo, I was wrong. I... And I'll be and I'll be the first one to say, you know what? Thank God the Lakers finally made that decision. It was the right decision, but it doesn't change the fact that he should be there right now. Heck, he doesn't belong on an NBA roster or a G League roster. If you want to be 100 about it, if you want facts over feelings, he doesn't belong on an NBA roster or a G League roster. Or he belongs in college. So. If we're going to go this direction now, understand this. You interview him, you interview LeBron after the game, and you're interviewing Bronny, a player who played two minutes and 41 seconds. I literally felt bad for the kid. It's embarrassing what they did to him last night. They embarrassed him. Some people don't may not agree with me. They may say, oh, this isn't embarrassing. No, you're interviewing somebody and as them. How did you feel out there? Uh, what was going through your mind? Uh, you know, well, what was this like for you? Like two minutes and 41 seconds. They were minus five when he was out there. He's not good enough. LeBron got his dream. He got his wish. He made It came true. He walked on the floor with his son. He got to live his dream. The dream that he paid for. The dream that he controlled. Because if LeBron said, send his ass to the G League, the kid would be in the G League right now. The integrity and the credibility and the ethics of the Los, the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James are flawed. The league is embarrassed 
They should be in, it, well, they should be. They're probably not because they don't. They, they allow all kinds of bullshit in this league. The league should be embarrassed with what's going on. It's a joke. It's a joke. He played two minutes and 41 seconds in the second quarter. They couldn't even leave him out there to play four. They couldn't even leave him out there to play four because J.J. Redick didn't trust him to play four minutes because he saw the league shrinking before his eyes. He saw the league shrinking. It's like, oh, I got to get him out of there. This ain't your, this isn't your high school. This isn't USC. This isn't the G League. This isn't any league across the uh, across the world. This is the NBA, where the best of the best are supposed to be playing. And the Los Angeles Lakers have made a mockery of it. If I'm Cam Reddish, shit. If I'm Cam Reddish and Jalen Hood Shafino, I got issues. I'm pissed. I might still be benched. But I'll be damned that young motherfucker's playing in front of me who I would mop the floor with. Bronny is the worst player in the league. And it's there's not a close second. Take every one of the and he's on the active roster too. So he's not even off. He's not even the 15th man. He's not even the 15th man. He was the 10th man yesterday. Will he play their next game? I have no idea. They play the way they play who next? They play the uh, they play the Suns on Friday. If he sees the court on Friday, Come on, man. Do we have any integrity and respect left for this game that we're going to play someone who's clearly not good enough? Just because you can breathe, just because you can run, just because you can jump, just because you can dribble a little bit, doesn't mean you should be on the court in a, on an NBA court. It's pathetic. It's sad. While there are guys fighting for their lives for spots, this child... He's an adult male, though. But this, this guy has gotten a gift taken away from someone who's worked their life to get there. And people say nepotism in, it, it is in every walk of life. Yeah, I, I understand. I take sports, professional sports, in a different light. Comparing this to Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken, Ken Griffey Sr., let me give you some background on Ken Griffey Sr. Ken Griffey Sr. Statistically, his last year in the majors, he played a hundred. He played thirty games. He played thirty games in his second to last year, nineteen ninety. He played sixty-seven games. You never heard Ken Griffey G Senior championing to be on the same team with his son. You never heard that. It wasn't done that way. It just happened to end up that way. Ken Griffey Jr.'s first season in the majors was in 1989. In 1989, Ken Griffey Sr. was playing for the Cincinnati Reds. And he played 106 games, had eight homers, 30 RBI. He hit 263. He was a serviceable role player at that point in his career. Ken Griffey, Ken Griffey Sr. was always a good baseball player. He was not a great one. He was a good one. He was a two, three-time All-Star, had some good seasons with the Reds and the Yankees, and had a long and, and was a was a was a serviceable role player late in his career. But he was a good player. And then, as in 1999, in 90, he gets traded to the Reds, and later on moves on to the to the Mariners. Now, I don't know when they had their that one game together, when the first time it was, whether it was in 90 or 91, because he played two years with the Mariners, was on the roster. He didn't play a lot of games. But Ken Griffey Jr. was a superstar. Ken Griffey Jr. was the was third in rookie of the year 
as a 19 year old. As a 20 year old, he was a gold glove winner and an all star. As a 21 year old, he was an all star, a gold glove winner, and a silver slugger. Ken Griffey Jr. is one of the greatest baseball players in the history of the league. We are comparing an apple to an orange. Ken Griffey Sr. didn't force this. Ken Griffey Sr. got lucky to be a part of it. LeBron James forced this. And Bronny ain't Ken Griffey Jr., bro. Not close. I hope this circus ends soon. It's not going to. I don't think Bronny will spend one day in the G League. I don't. If it happens, I will be shocked. Let me be shocked. I'll be happy to be shocked. Because at least we're going to grow some level of integrity back in this sport where we're not keeping unqualified players in the league. Uh, people in the league. doesn't belong in the league. Not right now. Not what we are watching. Not what we saw in the... Not what we saw in the summer against a bunch of guys who are not in the league. And not what we saw in the preseason against many guys who are not in the league. They didn't let him play four minutes. And interviewing, interviewing him on the court at the end of the game was an embarrassment. You ever interview a guy who scores zero points, 0 of 2? 0 of 1 from 3, and plays 2 minutes and 41 seconds? No, you don't. Unless it's Bronny James. And he's playing with daddy. We should all be so lucky to have the power to do what LeBron James was able to do here. But this isn't like being the CEO of your music production or your video production company. This is playing him against the most elite athletes in the world. And he's not one of them. And everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. To the point where players on the sideline are saying he sucks. He can't play. Devin Booker was seen saying he can't play. And no one has the stones to say, yo, this fucking kid can't play. Not right now. Devin Booker came out of college at 19. Devin Booker was a thousand times the player at 19 that Bronny James is right now. Anthony Edwards came out of college at 19. Thousand times the player at 19 that Bronny James is right now. Granted, they're all first round picks. I get it. But the circus is in town in LA, and let's see how long it lasts. I hope it ends, but I don't expect it to. And we got to see a joke right there. That was a joke. It's embarrassing. But hey, that's what that's what yeah, and ESPN's gonna. And the next time he plays, it'll be put front and center by ESPN, and they'll push it to the gills. And the first shot he makes, they'll treat it like he won the NBA championship. That's all I got, man, on this one. Facts over – this is Rudy's rant. Facts over feelings because I don't give a fuck about your feelings, man. Let me know what you think, man. Com- comment in the – you can leave a comment. You know, pound that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe and jump on over to Rudy's rant on YouTube and subscribe over there too. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Come on now.